beloved brother and bishop, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, the Bishop of Sokoto Catholic Diocese. Let's welcome Bishop Kuka. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Melafia, the clergy, everybody, we're all in this together. I am sorry. I was supposed to have been at the wake keep and to preach the sermon, but uh, we were busy with other duties in Anambra, and uh, or just as well because I got in very late yesterday in the evening. Um, Dr. Robert Melafia, I actually always call him Professor Melafia, and he will shake his head. And I said to him, you are more than just being called a doctor. And for some strange reason, I always saw Dr. Melafia as Professor Melafia. I think his son, let me say, made the mistake of referring to him as a sociologist. Professor Melafia that I knew, not only crossed all continents physically and intellectually, but crossed literally every subject. You could hold a discussion with Professor Melafia on ancient Greek philosophy. You could hold a conversation with Dr. Melafia on the history of the Catholic Church or the Roman Empire, whichever one you chose. He was not only an accomplished scholar, but one of the things that continue to, I continue to reflect on from the time I heard of his death was how did it take Melafia so long to come to the public space? Uh, for the better part of his uh, 64 years on earth, many of you who knew him, people knew him as a scholar, but also as a bureaucrat and an international diplomat. And as a result, there was very little, if anything, that Nigerians knew about him. If you didn't move in academic cycles, or in international and national bureaucratic cycles. I first met Dr. Melafia on the pages of the newspaper as I was going to England in 1986 for my doctoral program. And I stumbled on an article, a three-part article that Dr. Melafia wrote. And that was the first time I heard his name. I clipped that article, took it with me to England, and if you read my book, Religion, Politics, and Power, you'll see my reference. Our paths will later cross, and that was the first time I saw Melafia physically. I was working on the streets of Oxford in 1986, and from across the road, I saw somebody waving at me. I didn't know who he was, and he ran across the road and embraced me told me his name was Obed Melafia. And that was our first physical meeting. Since then, our paths will cross in a lot of academic fora, but also many fora in which we were thinking about our country. But you know, God saved the best time of his life for the last years of his life. And he was literally in the last two or three years like a man on a sprint. And that is how he caught national attention. Dr. Melafia is not somebody we should mourn. Uh, he's a younger brother, but I look back and I know that when we count the years as human beings, we must also remember that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, lived barely half the number of years that Melafia lived. So in the final analysis, it is not the amount of years. Um, as the thoughts about the possibility of a new Secretary General for the Commonwealth, a Commonwealth Secretary in London began to go around. I remember that I was humbly consulted and Dr. Melafia was in the race to become the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. One thing led to the other, God had other plans. 
I want to say that Melafia's life is a testimony about what Nigeria should be. It's also a testimony about what the Church of Christ should be because he injected and he introduced into national conversation the urgency of fixing Nigeria. But I think for those of you who are in politics, if there is anything we can take away, it is that Dr. Melafia helped to move the needle of national conversation and place the middle belt at the heart of the debate about the future of Nigeria. It may have taken us years to come to this point, but we are at a point in which we cannot pull back. So the best legacy and the best tribute we can pay to Dr. Melafia is not to mourn him, but also to look at his illustrious contribution to national debate, and also to bring with a greater sense of urgency the need for a deep intellectual understanding of the problems of Nigeria. There are a lot of good men and good women in Nigeria. And the mistake we've always made is that we are looking for good men to change Nigeria. There is nowhere in the world where the illiterate have formed a civilization. The building of a civilization is an intellectual exercise. And that alone should give us the courage to hold a candle on behalf of Dr. Melafia. Finally, as I told you, Margaret, the last time I checked, our God is a perfect God. He still remains a perfect God. And his perfection does not lie in how much what he does aligns with our ordinary human thinking. You are now a father, a mother, but as we said and as I said to you, the Lord has already assured us he will never place a burden on our shoulders that we cannot carry. He has also assured us that what seems like a burden to us is always a light burden. So I would like, on behalf of all of us, um, please, just give me a second. All the men here, all the religious men here, please rise up. Because I would like us to pray for somebody who has asked for our prayers, namely Samora, his son. Uh, in one of the tributes, I don't know whether it's that of his wife or his own tribute, Samora says, and I, I'm sorry, uh, but he said something that I think all of us should honor because it struck me. He said, please, Dad, present my case to the throne of God with Grandpa and Grandma from both Daddy and Mommy's side. I have faith that I am healed and will return and achieve my destiny in Jesus' name. So on behalf of all of us here, I'd like us to raise our hand and wherever Samora is, that the blessings of God will meet him and that the prayers that he himself has articulated, the Lord who knows our hearts and who has plans for us beyond our understanding and comprehension, within our own eyes and within our own life, May the Lord bring restoration to Samora so that he can accomplish the race that the Lord himself has set for him. May God hear our prayers because we ask everything in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Finally, once again, as I said, we are not mourning, we are celebrating a great life. May the Lord who brought our son, our brother, and our friend to this earth and who has taken him back to himself, give him a seat that he deserves through the mercy of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you.